A situation that I see come up um, more often than not in clients is uh, feeling that they have an unsupportive spouse or wondering what to do when they don't have the support of their partner. Um, basing this on what I see and what I hear, a lot of this is perceived. It's not actually disapproval, it's not actually a lack of support. Um, there might be some um, maybe misdirected communication, but really what tends to happen is we have a situation where one partner decides to make a change and the other kind of has to involuntarily decide how they're going to adapt. So food has been used to celebrate things since the beginning of time. Um, you know, we share love through food. We have family over, we cook the meals. Uh, if we're celebrating something big like a wedding, there's a great big wedding reception with lots and lots of food. If we celebrate birthdays, we celebrate them with cakes. We celebrate, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas dinners, all of these things to bring family and loved ones close. We like to make people their favorite meals on special days. and. Um, you know, bake them cookies when they're having a bad day or getting a new job, going out to celebrate at their favorite restaurant. So we've been doing this for so long that um, it's, it's not really going to change. Uh, you're welcome to try, but it's just sort of the way that it is. And there's really nothing wrong with it. I mean, aside from, you know, the potential pitfalls of rewarding children with food uh, and then the potential outcomes for that, this is, there's just really nothing wrong with this. So couples come together because of similarities, um, differences also, but when you have, uh, we come together on our morals, on our values, and, and things that we are connected by, we usually share on, on a similar level. Food tends to be one of those things that is a common denominator. So I, for example, am, I love food. I don't know many people who love food as much as I do. And I'm probably, because of that, because it's such a big part of my life, I'm not gonna draw a person who um, eats like a bird. I'm, I like to go to restaurants. I like to celebrate uh, in restaurants. I like to try new foods. I like to do things like go on wine tours and uh, tasting uh, menus at restaurants. So I'm probably not going to do very well with a partner who doesn't also love food because they're, what are they going to do, stay at home while I go out to dinner every Friday or Saturday night or, you know, so it's something that I share. I love food. I love sharing that, uh, sharing food with people um, for special occasions. So when a couple comes together, they might have a similar view on food. Now, we will then go and you know, build our, our daily routine off of that. So we'll do breakfast, you know, usually this way and lunch usually this way, dinner usually this way. And when someone goes on a diet or someone decides to change their lifestyle, become a vegetarian, anything like that, we have to expect that there's going to be some changes. Now, if you're making this as this change as an individual, your change isn't going to just affect you. It's not like deciding you're going to stop wearing skinny jeans and you're going to start wearing leggings. It's not like that. It, it affects your entire family and we do have to, to look at it that way. So when you have a family that is going from eating all of their meals one way to shifting that thinking altogether, you really do have to communicate and you really have to do, you really do have to be on the same page in that area. So let's talk about um, a situation that I see most commonly. So the most common situation for me is um, the wife decides that she's going to diet and the husband decides that he's going to go about life as per normal. So the wife in these situations is usually the primary food planner. So she does the weekly food planning, she does the grocery shopping, she does the food prep, she, she cooks all of the meals. So there's a number of scenarios uh, where I see the most, I see most commonly. So I'm going to touch on those and uh, they may or may not apply to you, but they're definitely, uh, they're definitely common. So scenario number one, in this situation, 
the dieter creates all of the, the meals the same as their own. So they've decided that they're going to switch to um, eating, uh, you know, chicken salads or whatever it is that they're eating. So they're preparing all of the very same meals for all the people in the family. So now the husband in these situations is used to eating their old way and has just grown accustomed to that. So he's used to eating, you know, lovely combined foods like chicken pot pies and pork roast with, you know, gravy and all of these lovely things. And now in front of him is a spinach salad with, um, with, you know, plain chicken breast on it. So chances are he's not going to find that very appetizing. Um, I have to eat that way a lot for certain athletic performance and I don't uh, always enjoy it either. So um, the husband might come home and say, oh, well, this again, or oh, well, you know, why don't we just order pizza or, and his disapproval has nothing to do with with the dieter. His disapproval has to do with the food. He again was used to eating a certain way and now all of a sudden he has a chicken salad in front of him and that's probably the last thing that he ever would have uh, ordered if he was in a restaurant. Now scenario two where the dieter takes care of their own food but leaves the non-dieter to care for their own food. So uh, and this might in the situation that I'm speaking of is not the normal practice in the past. So um, the non-dieter is probably not going to be happy about this change. They might jump right on board and, and enjoy the challenge and, you know, like that they get to, you know, okay, well now I'm never eating vegetables again or, you know, it, there could be many different variables. But chances are if he's used to having his meals prepared by, you know, the now dieter, um, chances are this change is not going to be well received because again, this wasn't his decision. So in, in a third scenario, uh, and this is probably the one that I see most commonly, we have a dieter who is um, not so sure this is, you know, maybe the fourth or fifth go. She's not feeling very confident. She knows her normal pitfalls are, you know, when there's treats left in the house, her resolve is low. So she goes and she says, I'm going to clean out the cupboards no more cookies, no more peanut butter, no more ice cream. And um, so now we have a situation where uh, the dieter feels very strongly that she needs this just for the beginning maybe, or maybe just forever, um, so that she can stay on track and expects that her family is going to support and love her and be okay with this. But what we have to anticipate is that that's not really a logical option to someone who doesn't think like we do. So there are plenty of people in this world who can have a box of cookies in the cupboard and maybe let them go bad. I look at an expiry date on a box of cookies and laugh hysterically because who on earth could keep a box of cookies in the cupboard for over a year? But believe me, there are people that can do this. Um, they're not unicorns, they exist. So I, you see these the situation often where you know the husband says well why do I have to do this if I have to if I want a cookie I have to go to a store to buy the cookie so now we have to understand that just because we think this way it doesn't mean our partners think this way so are they going to resist this choice yes are they going to judge this choice probably is it right maybe not but it isn't their reality they don't understand it and we tend to be a little bit defensive when it comes to things like this so we might not be offering an appropriate um, or very thorough explanation so the common denominator in all of these things as you can see is that it's our perception the non-dieter has a resistance to these choices because in this scenario, in these scenarios, he was not informed. He was not, um, re no one asked his opinion. He was told the primary food planner of this house is going on a diet and you are either going to defend for yourself or learn to like chicken salad. So because this wasn't his decision, of course he's going to resist it. It makes complete sense. And as a dieter, of course, we want our spouse to come on board and to be supportive and loving and understand how difficult this is for us and be proud of us. But we have to also understand that this wasn't their choice. So 
they can come on board and they can be loving and supportive, but we have to allow them room and space to do that. We can't just put down the iron fist and say, this is how it is. We are a partnership and we do have to make concessions and we do have to consider the other person's lifestyle and the other person's feelings too. The other thing that I see very frequently um, is that when most people start a diet, they tend to become a little bit self-righteous with their choices. Now you might not think it applies to you, um, and it may very well not, but I do see this often. I've done it. When I was first, I mean I was 200 pounds, when I first came um, from that lifestyle, I was very unsure and I went to the extreme because I was just white knuckling uh, all of my choices and I, I really needed to hold on to all of those motivational posters, all of the, um, the, the highly judgmental slogans and quotes that are kind of fear driven in all honesty because I was fearful, because I was afraid that I was going to fall off and I didn't want to. So if I clung really, really tightly to these very, very self-righteous, pompous opinions, then I can identify with that and I am that and chances are I'm not going to fall. Of course that isn't logical, um, but, but it is a very common thought. So we have to be careful as dieters what dialogue we use and not everybody, I hear this saying often too, um, you know, when you post motivational things on your Facebook wall, for example, um, or when you post your progress photos and people, you know, aren't 150% supportive and they, and they don't meet what your expectations are of support, we tend to call them haters. And I hate that word uh, so much because while people can be jealous and while people can project their own insecurities on us, Sometimes people are telling us the truth and it's hard for us to hear. And I have an expression where if it offends you, it applies to you. And it's very true. And I've been caught in this. I was very, very offended when someone would come to me and say, um, I'm very hurt by your posts. I find them very judgmental. Now that person was projecting their insecurities. I cannot take that away from, you know, that's fact. But what is also fact is my posts were very judgmental and my posts were very extreme. And so um, we have to understand and recognize that sometimes without meaning to, uh, we do come off that way. We can come off that way. I shouldn't say we do. We can come off that way. And we do have to be aware of that. If we want support and compassion from people, we have to be supportive and compassionate. We cannot expect them to just, well, we're on a diet, so they need to just jump on board. That's really not the way the world works. So um, we do have to be conscious of what image we're putting out there, what we're asking of people, and how we are asking. So the bottom line in all of this is, if you find yourself looking at your non-dieting partner um, with laser beam eyes because they're slamming back a medium pizza while you're picking out a chicken salad begrudgingly, uh, but trying to convince yourself that it's delicious and wonderful and this is your ticket to happiness, um, we really, really do have to remember that this is our choice. It wasn't theirs. And while it is lovely for us to have them jump on and support us and love us and give us everything that we need, it's not their job. Um, we have to use our big grown up words and communicate our feelings the best way that we can and hope that they come on board. They might not, and they might not for their own reasons. It might not have anything to do with you, but that has to be okay. You be okay with your decision and you don't need anyone else to be okay with your decision. Good luck.